Okay, so we're gonna do the rest of this eye by coloring in the inside of the pupil. And then we're gonna go yellow ring and orange ring and blend with clean water. And then after you do that part, we're gonna be moving on to adding those feathers because we've already done the beak. Okay, so I have already colored all of that eye and now I'm just gonna blend like I did on the last one. And remember, you really only need to add that water just right along the edge and wherever you want it to blend onto. Okay, and remember the thing about watercolor, if you use that um, for your background, if you get watercolor wet again, it is going to pick up and move around. So we wanna try to keep, if anything that we want to stay where it is, we don't wanna get it wet again if you used um, those watercolors, okay? All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some little lines um, inside of this iris to make it a little bit more realistic. Now, this one's probably still too wet, but we can go around and just add in some lines. If you look in the mirror at your own eyes, we've got lots of details in these eyes, and so do animals. Okay, so with our technique that we did where we use that water, we already kind of see some of that happening naturally. We're just extending some of it, okay? And if you don't like how it looks now, you can go on and add that water in. Um, one artist that I follow, she says that as she's creating, she's always creating three at a time, which sounds like a lot, but um, then she says that you're more willing to try some things. So if you're not sure if you're gonna like it and it's your only one, then you're gonna be a little bit more nervous. Ooh, sorry. Um, you're gonna be more nervous to try it. But with this um, way, you know, if you have more than more than one going, then um, you're gonna be more likely to give some things a try, okay? Um, so if you have the ability to do more than one at a time, maybe the time or the space, the materials, the paper, that kind of thing, then, then go in and give it a try won't hurt anything, right? We're gonna just add in some color because this is getting ready to get really interesting. So I'm just going around the outer edge with a color I chose blue. You can choose whatever color you want. The inner edge that I just did was with an orange I'm gonna go on and continue. And then let's see. I could even go back in uh, with a lighter blue um, a little bit and do the inside. Maybe in just a few spots. That kind of helped give it a little bit of shape. And then we're gonna be adding in our big eye feathers, okay? So they're gonna be looking like, um, like almost like eyeglasses and um, eyebrows on, on this cool looking owl. So um, we already have the shape of the eye right here. It's just gonna continue off the shape of the eye and then we're going to start making what almost looks like little eyelashes, um, but they're gonna be um, representing our feathers. And kind of make them cross over each other to look a little bit more lifelike. And then once we get up here to the corner of the page, we're gonna go in and swoop these things all the way up and create these kind of dash marks 
to give it that texture. Okay, and then we're gonna just keep going a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower across until we get to the center part right here. So let's just give him, it looks like an eyebrow. And what's happening with my Sharpies is that my paper is not completely dry. So it's absorbing some of that color and that's making my Sharpies not wanna work. Um, you're gonna make the thick, the thicker part is gonna be right here along where the eye touches. So I'm gonna go in and fill all this in, this space, and then just thin it out as I go. It's gonna get a little bit more gray. I can even add in some gray if I want. And then we'll just go back around and do that again, okay? Kind of crisscross, it's a little bit of a cross hatching look. Just makes us see that there's layers and layers and layers of feathers that are already starting right there, okay? And you can make some of them a little bit longer. They don't have to be exactly the same length. All right, so we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side in just a minute. We're also gonna create some feather lines coming around the beak. You can um, do them coming up on each side of the beak and then going straight up. And then we're gonna kind of lean in towards the eyes and then start going straight up. These almost look like tally marks. Do different heights, different lengths, different numbers of um, hatch marks. And then we can come down here and also add these lines, okay? All right, so we're gonna do the other eye and then I'll be Okay, right. so we had a change of scenery since I was just on. Um, so I am home now. I'm gonna finish up this video for you guys. Um, we're gonna go on and add in just some feathers with any color choice that you want. Um, so just within any of these little marks that you've already made, we're going to just fill in lots and lots of feathers. Switching colors every once in a while. Um, it's totally up to you where and how. But remember, you wanna kinda of keep them going in the direction that those black marks were going. That will help make sure that it still looks like feathers and not like you've all of a sudden done a cactus, you know. So, anyways, you can decide how your colors look, how your little lines look. And then we're gonna start coming in below the eye just to go on and add, even, even up next to the eye, we're gonna add these feather lines. I'm not so worried about disconnecting all of them. Kind of makes it pretty cool that it's, some of them are connected and some of them aren't. So same thing over here, we can start up high, kind of lightly go around, get a little bit heavier around here. and even here. All right, I'm gonna keep doing that for just a second, and you can too. And then we're gonna start adding in our final touches for our owl. blue over here and I can remember you can use different angles um, so if I wanted to use the point I'm gonna get that thin line if I wanted to get a little bit thicker I can lay I can lay my marker on its side a little bit more 
to give And then I'm even going to do a little bit with my Sharpie just to kind of hatch and cross hatch like we learned um, earlier in the year around Christmas. We really worked hard on that um, to kind of add in more lines. I picked a bad one. To show the shape of that face and where the face kind of starts and the chest starts. All right, and then you're just gonna go on back in and see what do you think needs an extra touch. And if you wanna blend anything, you know you can use um, your water and you can also use um, your clean brush and just kind of blend anything if you want it to be a little bit softer of a look. Remember what I said earlier though, if you touch Watercolor, even after it's dry, it's going to bleed a little. So you've got to be careful about your color choices and your placement and how much water you actually put on these. And even the direction of your strokes with the water. Think about that. Make sure that they're going in the same direction so that Everything kind of blends and moves the way that you want it to. So we can keep on adding um, lines around your owl to create um, any kind of contrast that you want. If you want more feathers, it's just up to you. It's your it's your piece of art. It's your um, time that you're spending on it. So do as you will. And I'm going to keep touching up mine, and I can't wait to see your alls. I'm going to leave you guys instructions on how you can upload those uh, to Google Slides on our Google Classroom and share your art with the class. And then I'll have another owl activity for you guys to do tomorrow. Can't wait to talk to you again. See ya.